Welcome to the 4R webinar, Optimizing Inventory During Unique Supply Chain Challenges. This webinar will be about 30 minutes long with 15 minutes at the end for question and answers. During the webinar, if you have questions, please type them into the chat feature on the side of your screen. At the conclusion of this event, a recording of the webinar will be available on our website at 4rsystems.com. And now I will turn the stage over to Nina Shivaroli, Director of Customer Success at 4R, and Allie Fleming and Taylor Campbell from Pilot Flying J. Nina? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Nina Shivaroli. I am the Director of Customer Success at 4R Systems. And today I'm going to talk about the current state of the supply chain and how the ongoing effects of labor shortages and natural disaster are impacting the convenience store sector. I have the pilot company on the line with me. They are the largest operator of travel centers in North America with over 750 locations in the US and Canada. We have partnered with Pilot because they're looking for a solution to improve their in stocks and enhance their in store experience. So we have been delivering our forecasting and replenishment solution for over a year and a half. And we even were rolling out during pandemic period. Um, so during this webinar, I'm going to introduce convenience stores, also lay out some of the current challenges and what impact they have had on the data forecasting in the stores themselves. But don't worry, I will also provide some suggestions on how to navigate these issues and continue to have a profitable business. If there is one thing you take from this presentation, I hope it's that there still is opportunity and that regardless of what is happening in the supply chain and what is out of your control, there are things you can be doing to optimize what is in your control, like the workforce you do have and the inventory that is available in the stores. So what makes convenience stores different from other retailers? Consumers rely on convenience stores as a quick stop shop for basic necessities and everyday items, like your food, your drinks, paper products, first aid, of course, gas, car supplies. And they tend to have a little less variety and a little less fresh food as there are smaller footprints, but they're still facing those same challenges that all retailers are facing. The difference with truck stop convenience stores is that they tend to have different seasonality, meaning their demand is more dependent on the geography of that location and what the typical weather patterns or what the travel season is and when it's heaviest and in that particular geography. Their customers tend to stop for longer periods of time, whether it's to stretch their legs, walk their dogs, take a nap, or in some locations they can even shower. And typically these customers have already been driving for a longer period of time and will continue to travel after they leave. So it's really key that these stores have what they need. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, whether it is a truck stop or not, convenience stores provide convenient everyday items for those of us on the go, making it even more important for these stores in this space to know the best ways to plan and quickly adapt to unpredictable and challenging periods. So what's going on in the current state? We are in the midst of unprecedented and prolonged challenges stemming from the shutdowns of COVID and they continue to alter the way we need to think, operate and plan, not only in the retail space, but everyday life. Today, I'm going to speak to how to navigate through that ongoing labor shortage the inventory availability or really the lack thereof. Unpredictable natural disasters, storms or pandemics, and just the general change in the revenue stream. But let's start with the labor shortage and natural disaster. Though these are very different, they really do cause similar havoc on the supply chain. And consumers mainly see the effect of these at the store level but typically don't think about the bigger picture and how there's a compounding effect of these two challenges throughout the supply chain. Meaning we see the empty shelves, the lack of sporadic or unavailability of inventory. It's difficult to find an associate 
or maybe there's 15 lanes, but only two registers are open when you're checking out and the aisles are messy or nothing's where it's supposed to be and everybody's favorite inflation. Obviously the labor shortage in the store is creating quite a challenge, but even if there were no labor shortage at the store specifically, the stores would still be impacted by the compounded effect of the other labor touch points within the supply chain. Natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, snowstorms, and even pandemics impact the ability for a store associate to get to work and can slow down and prevent drivers from making deliveries. So take a look at the cycle and just think about where it starts. From getting the raw materials to the supplier, to the manufacturer, to the distributor, to the actual store, to the consumer, and all the logistics in between, you need people for that. Not to mention with a pandemic on our hands, the consumer's behavior is changing and previous years are no longer useful in predicting future forecasts. So what does this mean for the retailer? First off, annoyed, underwhelmed customers that might not return, but let's just assume that every customer is kind and patient and is understanding of the situation. What else does this affect and how should a convenience store plan ahead and find the opportunity? Each issue contributes to a different challenge with, within the supply chain, but also adds volatility and inaccuracy to the data that feeds the retailer's optimization engine. So let's start with inaccurate and unpredictable, ever-changing data. We've all heard the term garbage in, garbage out. If the data is no longer regular or accurate based on normal standards and is now longer and less predictable, then any ordering engine could drastically underestimate the inventory needed to fulfill demand between deliveries. For example, lead times. Pre-pandemic, they were relatively static and reliable, but now inventory is hung up at the ports, drivers are hard to find, and lead times are becoming longer and more variable. This is just one example, but is one of the causes for when the ordering tool could create inaccurate recommendations that's not gonna meet the proper demands if the old static lead times continue to be used. Instead, the tool needs to be dynamic and needs to respond to changes quicker than it has in the past. It needs to recognize variability and account for the unknown in the most optimal way. It's also creating, this, this time is also creating inefficient workflows or incomplete tasks done at the stores. With the labor shortage and less employees at the stores, standard workflows and protocols are suffering. Retailers should focus their employees' valuable time on the most beneficial tasks that would drive sales and happy returning customers. Focus that associate to look into costly exceptions and data, data anomalies such as missing, expired, or even damaged product preventing sales. Automating that communication and prioritizing tasks is key to making a store thrive during these times. There is also a change in consumer need. With the supply chain challenges, it is more common to see empty shelves. So how can we still be profitable when the inventory is missing? What if we fill those empty shelves with substitutable items or items we're overstocked on or extra items that are in the back room? Convenience stores are typically more convenient and have less choices and smaller sizes but if that consumer cannot find the product they want in the normal grocer, the convenience store is next in line. This is where the opportunity is. Paper towels and toilet paper, for instance, will see a rise in demand in the C-stores. There's an opportunity here for the C-store to address the consumer's change in behavior and fulfill their needs with items that haven't sold as well in the past. They need to quickly adjust to that and fulfill it. Accessibility. So think of those effects of the natural disasters. Hurricanes, snowstorms, and floods, and even pandemic make it difficult and even impossible for the consumer 
or even the store associate to actually get to the store. But those situations can also drive sales in emergency items such as water, flashlights, propane, and in our case, in, in our case masks. There are certain geographies and times of the year that these disasters are more probable, but it's very hard to predict the actual week that they're going to hit. So it's key that the retailer has a plan and is prepared at stores likely to be affected and has the ability to be more or less aggressive with emergency items or really any items during certain times of the year. Future state, so how can we mitigate these risks given the current situation? C-store executives are challenged with many decisions all the time, but should be looking for the opportunities in the areas they can control and embrace the consumer's change in behavior. All of these issues point to the need for more automation and increased communication, predictive analytics, and with less eyes, ears, and hands on the floor, it is evident that the retailer looks to optimize their time where it is most profitable and beneficial. So they need a solution that can dynamically adjust to change in demand and account for that uncertainty and variability without having to rely on the previous years. It can automatically identify exceptions where a data issue is possible, and it can provide recommendations to optimize the inventory that is available whether it be substitutable items or even planogram changes. It includes the flexibility to dial the inventory up or down in pre preparation for anticipated changes. And it can contribute to a more efficient workflow for the store associates to best use their more limited time. If a C store, if a C store can outsource all or even some of those pieces, then there is a potential to become more profitable on several levels. By implementing an intelligent solution that automatically accounts for uncertainty and changes in trend, provides automated task and exception management, then the retailer can create a more efficient store workflow and improve their data integrity. If they can do that, the C store has hit the holy grail. They are now optimizing inventory management and forecast accuracy with lower resource costs since they are operating under with less employees. We talked about the store level resources, but let's not forget about headquarters. Leveraging a predictive analytics and forecasting solution will take HQ employees out of the mundane day-to-day -day guessing game activities and provide more time to focus their skill set on more strategic initiatives like overcoming the impact of this ongoing pandemic. That's all I have for today, but I do have a few questions for the pilot team. So Allie Fleming and Taylor Campbell are two of our point contacts at Pilot, and we work on we work with them on a weekly and sometimes daily basis. So thank you both for joining us to get today. Um, first question, what is Pilot's outlook on the macro state of the business? Hi, Nina. Thanks for having us um, as panelists today. Uh, Pilot is very optimistic on the macro state of the economy. The country is beginning to return to some form of normalcy and the roadblocks that we've been facing over the past year have been, being, have been beginning to improve. There are still a lot of unknowns out there about the upcoming holiday season and how long the supply chain will be impacted into 2022. Most articles I've read about the macro environment say the supply chain will be impacted into at least Q2 of next year. But we are trying to be strategic with solutions that will help ease the current strains more quickly for us. All retailers in the country are struggling to have the goods and services available to consumers right now and our demand continues to grow we're being strategic in ways to capture that demand yep i feel like we're all feeling that challenge with christmas gifts and whatnot so <laughs> um how has pilot navigated the unreliable supply chain 
I'll take this one. Um, at Pilot Flying J with 700 plus locations, we are not immune to the supply chain hardships that many are having. Our teams have worked hard to keep our stores stocked with products that our guests want to purchase, and we are always thinking and looking for ways to enhance the in-store experience for our team members and guests. In our strategic initiatives, it has been imperative for us to use real-time data to help forecast and make the best business decisions. With that, one of them being the 4R system solutions, as Nina alluded to, um, 4R has helped us understand our guests better, simplify our store operations, and helped improve our in-stock position. Lastly, I cannot stress enough, in times of uncertainty, being flexible and extending some grace has helped a lot. We know and trust that we are utilizing every resource that we have available to maintain integrity with our guests, which will always be top priority. Okay, what are pilots' expectations for 2022 and what challenges do you think you'll? Yeah, so for 2022, Pilot is anticipating the supply constraints to continue. Um, labor shortages are increasing and the supply chain continues to be strained since the demand doesn't seem to be in declining. Um, with many unknowns still out there, new variants coming into play, we are optimistic but super cautious. We want to do our best to provide an outstanding store experience for our team members and our guests and be super strategic in getting the goods our guests want onto our shelves. Great. Well, I think that's all the questions that I had for the pilot team. I'm going to hand it back over to Jess. So thank you again. Great, thank you. Um, if you have questions, now is the time to um, add them to the chat feature in the side of the screen. Um, we have one question in that says, uh, once we get out of the current supply chain issues, how might we forecast future supply chain disruptions and mitigate those risks? That's a good question. Um, I guess first, this probably goes without saying, but let's try to avoid that supply chain disruption in the first place. So look look at the vulnerabilities and weaknesses you've faced over the last year and see if there's a way to either eliminate or find an alternative for that that's more reliable. But I'm assuming that's probably something you can't do in most cases. So instead, Right now, it's probably the best idea to just start to develop a conting contingency plan and just evaluate what happened in the past and what worked and what didn't. And just plan for that what if scenario. What is the best way to handle this if and when this happens again? And another option, just develop a disruption strategy. If, it's, if you know it's going to happen, how can you deal with it. So re-examine those just-in-time strategies and consider holding more stock in the best areas to reduce risk and just improve your resiliency. Are there any other questions coming through? Thank you. That's um, all the questions that we have for today. Um, thank you, all three of you, for presenting today. Um, as I mentioned, a recording of this webinar will be available on our website um, following this presentation. So thank you, ladies, and thank you, everyone, for attending. Okay. Thank you.